Now, in most cases, you should not be changing your PE exam after you fail it a few times, but there are some very specific and a few situations in which choosing a different exam actually makes sense and may be even a really smart move. So if you're considering switching your exam, this video was made for you. Today, I'm gonna to break down six strategic exam changes that you can make that are gonna stack the odds in your favor so you can get this thing done. Hello everybody, I'm Isaac Okason. I'm with Civil Engineering Academy. In another video, I actually talked about why I think sticking with the same exam is the best option most of the time. But today, I'm gonna to cover some exemptions to that rule. So stick with me till the end. We're gonna talk about the six strategic pivots that are gonna increase your chances of passing and which one may apply to you in your own circumstance. We'll see you in a minute. Alrighty then, let's get right into it. Everybody, let's talk about this. So the very first scenario in which choosing a different PE exam can actually be a smart move for you if you've changed, is actually if you've changed lanes in your career. So if you've totally flipped the script on what you wanna do, in this case, earning a PE license in another exam that relates to what you do is actually a good choice to switch. That's a good reason to switch. In fact, I've already covered this in another video. The very first step to decide which civil PE exam to take is to really look at what you're doing for work and go with that. So if you've actually gone from one discipline into another civil engineering discipline, and you know maybe you've wanted to pivot in your career, then changing your exam to a new discipline can increase your chances of passing because that is what you should be focused on. Maybe you've started a career in transportation projects and you've been on a computer all day long, but then you got promoted and you became the boots on the ground person, an engineering project manager or engineering manager that's actually out there on the construction site watching these jobs get built, making sure they're getting done on time, within budget, within scope, and you've been doing that. So you've been doing this new job now for some period of time, maybe it's a few years. You haven't had success maybe on the transportation exam. Why don't you go ahead and switch to construction? Maybe that makes more sense for you because that's the world you're living in. Now I know construction exam, the construction PE exam is actually one of the most difficult PE exams. It has typically one of the lowest pass rates that we've seen in quite some time, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be difficult for you. If you've been working in this new job, applying the concepts, and you're using codes day in and day out in the new position, you're obviously becoming more familiar with what you're going to be using and the topics that may be found under construction. So it's obvious that we should be going with that. On the other hand, if you go with transportation, you have to remember a lot of things that maybe you've simply forgotten because you're not in the practice of doing that anymore. So you've become so familiar now with this new role that you're in, maybe this new career, that changing your PE exam to this discipline just makes sense. And I actually think that's a smart move to do if you are indeed either switching career lanes or you found yourself in a new position that may not be related to the previous exam experience that you've had. All right, let's jump into scenario number two, and that actually goes hand in hand with scenario number one. In fact, it's quite opposite of it, actually. And this has to do with making a smart choice when making and picking an exam that actually goes way back to what you've been maybe doing early on in your career instead of doing what you're currently doing in your career now. So this option is all about capitalizing on what you already know and what you've done quite often from past or previous jobs that you've had. So in this particular scenario, even though you probably have to remember a lot of things because it's been so long ago, your basic understanding of the topics and the discipline this is related to is what you are used to working in and is probably still pretty solid. You may know common terms that come up, equations, common knowledge areas that pop up, and everything else. So this can definitely give you a head start when preparing for your exam. So if we go back to my previous example, here you've switched from doing transportation design work to managing the construction of these transportation projects on the job site. Now you've followed my advice and chosen the PE construction exam because it's what you've been doing for work. That's cool. But unfortunately, you haven't been able to pass. So in this case, switching to the transportation exam can be a smart move because maybe that's your foundation. And no, that's not because it simply has higher pass rates that we want to go back to transportation. It's because you know the basics and you have a solid
solid foundation of those topics related to that exam. You definitely know the codes and standards. You were doing it in past design work. That's also a good reason to make the switch. So not only have you already had this baseline understanding of those topics, depending on what you used to do, you're already pretty familiar with a few of the codes and the standards and the way they do things. And just knowing all of that puts you ahead of the game by a mile. And that's why it may be smart to changing your PE exam to a discipline you used to work for or used to be embedded in as that could be a good thing rather than switching to one you've never seen before because the exam seems to be easier. We, we don't we want to get away from just selecting what's easy and use what's applicable to your skill set, which could be these two topics we just talked about that go hand in hand. All right, next up we have scenario number three. Now this one is all about the scope of work that you're dealing with, that you deal with every day, not your particular discipline that you are in itself. So the majority of job positions out there are really a blend of multiple disciplines. It's kind of hard actually to find one position that only specializes in one thing. So this means that a lot of us end up doing a little bit of everything. A little bit of structural, a little bit of geotech, maybe it's a little bit of transportation and water, I don't know. Maybe even a little bit of construction thrown in there as well since it all ties these disciplines together. We all get involved in construction at some level. Now in this case you may be choosing a PE exam based on your job title or formal discipline that you find yourself in only to find out that it's maybe not a good fit for you based on the work that you actually do every day. This is actually a good reason to change lanes and maybe go to a different PE exam that aligns more with the task that you actually do every every day. And with that, I can actually give you my own personal experience. I work in the utility world doing a little bit of multiple disciplines. I could have easily chosen structures or construction, but I actually chose geotech. And why did I do that? The tasks that I was really close to working with included foundation work. So I felt like geotech was going to be a boost to my career. I wanted to know more about that subject. I felt like it was applicable to what I was doing which is transmission engineering, and that can encompass a variety of different subjects. So I felt like geotech was gonna help me. It's also something I wanted to dive into further to better help my career. Now there is no transmission engineering PE exam, so I had to select one that I felt aligned with what I was doing, just so happened to be geotech. Here's another example for you. Maybe you're a construction engineer managing projects on the job site. After some time, you realize that most of your projects are actually water resource projects, like drainage systems and maybe culverts, something like that. The work requires you to know a lot about stormwater management, runoff, all of these hydrology and hydraulics topics. So in this particular case, your job is much more aligned maybe with water resources than pure construction management tasks. So here it's gonna make sense to actually switch from construction to water resources, and I think that's a smart move to do. So to sum all of that up, if you haven't had success with your current exam choice, yet, changing to another exam that aligns with the type of work you do, not the formal discipline that you're actually in, is probably a smart move for you to get this thing passed. All right, let's talk about number four. This is the scenario that has to deal with your comfort level. And that means you're comfortable with the topics covered in a particular exam. Now this ties in nicely with those other topics I just mentioned, but if you're struggling with the content of your current exam, you can look at what other exams are and figure out which one you think you'd be most comfortable with, even though you have no background in this field whatsoever. Now this is the route that Joe Ebinger, Esteban Valdera, and Brett Van Hazel chose for their own PE exam journey. They're all mechanical engineers who found themselves working in the civil engineering world and had to switch from the mechanical PE to the civil engineering PE exam. But the question I have is which exam, which civil exam, does a mechanical engineer end up taking? What they ended up doing is they had to go through all the civil PE exams and sort out which one they were more comfortable with based on their workload that they're doing, even though they had zero civil engineering education in any of these disciplines. And 
And obviously mechanicals cover some, but definitely they don't cover everything that a civil has to know. So if you're a mechanical engineer, I'm gonna leave links in the description. Go check out those interviews we did with all of them. And if you're a civil engineer, uh, the same thing does apply to you. So go check them out too. Maybe you're taking the water resources exam and have been having a really hard time with the water related topics. Maybe that's the problem. And maybe you're doing fine in soil mechanics and materials type questions. So, and that's, that's a great scenario. That's a great, great case. Maybe you want to consider switching to a geotechnical exam, but I'm definitely going to leave you a caution. Well, the soil mechanics questions on the geotech exam are not going to be easy ones, and they're definitely not going to be the same level of difficulty that you would find on a water resources exam. Instead, they're definitely going to be more in-depth soil mechanics questions for folks specializing in geotech. So you're going to have to put in a little extra work. And the same can be said, and the same is true for all the other five disciplines and uh, other exams. So in the end, switching to an exam that doesn't emphasize your weak spots and has more questions on the things you're actually good at may actually be a smart move to make to finally pass the PE exam. Just keep that warning in mind when you get to studying after you make the decision to switch though. All right, now I have the last two possible scenarios in which you can change your PE exam after you have failed that exam a few times. For these two, it doesn't matter much which exam you take. The only thing you care about is absolutely getting your PE license. You have no work or educational ties to any particular exam, so you can go with any exam and change lanes to any of them as well. In the first case, if you've been struggling to pass the PE exam for what you do for work, you can switch to an exam that's more aligned with what you did well at school. That's definitely one of my pro tips if you're struggling to make a decision on this. Now, while scenario four actually covers your comfort level with different exams, this one's gonna cover the comfort level that you have with civil engineering topics. So going back to studying topics you already enjoyed, studying way back in the day of your college journey is gonna make this PE exam uh, much easier. You probably enjoyed sitting down to study topics that you were interested in the past. For example, if you work in construction and you have failed that exam a few times already, maybe you have a love for statics, mechanics and materials, or reinforced concrete design, and you remember doing those things and scoring the well in those classes in school, then maybe actually the structural PE exam is the one that you should be doing to get the job done. Or maybe you actually excelled in fluid mechanics and hydraulic engineering, then Water resources is probably gonna be the one that you wanna take. The key with this exam switch is simply to choose a new exam that makes it less of a burn it on you since your goal is to simply get the license and nothing else, get this thing over with. Leveraging your academic strengths and interests when you were younger does exactly this, making your exam pivot a strategic move in this case. Now finally, the last possible scenario is to actually change to another exam based on how easy it seems to prepare for it and pass the thing. Now in this particular scenario, again, you have no work or educational ties to a particular exam. There is no exam for the field you work in and you basically just wanna get this thing done. You wanna know which exam to take and get it done once and for all. Now, if this is you, you should be considering three things. First thing is pass rates. You want to be able to check out the pass rates for all five civil PE exams to see which ones have the highest pass rates over the years, meaning which ones may be quote unquote easier for you to pass. Now, none of them are easy, but look at pass rates because that's gonna help determine that. Now, we had a previous student in our PE review program. His name is Grant, and he switched from construction to water resources purely based on pass rates. Now, he had worked in the construction world before, but he was working now in land development at this time, and he just needed to get his PE license. And if you're working in land development, there's just no specific exam for this type of field. So he had to decide which PE exam to change based on the exam's pass rates and stats. 
That was a good indicator for him on which one to go with. Now the second thing you want to look at is the number of codes and standards that are going to be required when you're taking your exam. Some civil PE exams have a heavy emphasis on codes and standards, way more than others. So if you're having a terrible time passing that geotech exam, for example, which has 14 codes and standards now, back when I took it I think it was zero, and then it got up to two, but now we're at 14. So these 14 standards you need to know like the back of your hand. So changing to an exam that has fewer codes and standards that you need to know could get the job done for you. Which is exactly what Cameron McLaurin did. He works in transportation and has experience in construction management, but instead of taking construction or transportation, he went for water resources based on the number of codes and standards that are required, which is only two. Now the third thing you want to consider is the type of questions you're going to be asked. Some PE exams have more calculation type questions, and other exams are more conceptual, including look up this in the code type of questions. For example, the structural PE exam has quite a few math heavy questions that are related to structural design and analysis. If you're struggling to get over this hump, you could switch to transportation. Yes, the transportation exam does have more codes and standards than structural, but most of the questions rely on them completely for everything. They are all in on the codes. You simply need to find what you need in one of the codes that you need to look up and then solve the question. It's look up. So to wrap up scenario number six, if you're having trouble passing your PE exam, consider these three factors when you're making the switch to another exam and maybe you'll have an easier time to prepare and pass. This is probably the final Hail Mary move that you can do here to get the job done. All right, everybody, there you have it. I still do believe that sticking with the same exam after failure is definitely your best bet. You've already built up a ton of momentum studying the material for your original exam, but if you do find yourself in one of these six scenarios, switching exams might be a good choice, a nice strategic move to help you finally pass the PE exam. I definitely recommend sticking with the original, but if there are any reasons why to switch, I think we've got them all covered here. And they kind of all bleed together in, in some way, in some form. But we've covered six of them for you, and I think there's some strategy here to help you pass the exam. In any case, it doesn't matter which exam that you end up choosing or switching to, I'm gonna be here to help you on this journey every step of the way. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this addresses a question I get often about switching exams. I know it was helpful for me to think about. Hopefully it's helpful for you to listen to if you're making a decision about switching. Don't forget to like our channel and subscribe if you want more tips, tools, and resources that are going to help you ace your PE exam. Again, I'm Isaac Okeson with Civil Engineering Academy, helping you crush your professional civil engineering exams. Good luck on your studies, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.